Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the ninth episode of Dirty Chess Tricks Against Sicilian. Now as per the many requests, in this episode I am going to show you some of the wonderful tricks in the Smith Mora Gambit accepted main line from the white perspective. The opening arises after the following model that is e4, c5, d4, c captures d4, and now white gambit the pawn for a very fast development that is c3. Black accept the challenge that is d capture c3 and knight capture c3. After knight to c6, knight to f3, d6 and bishop to c4, we reach to the starting position of the main line of the Mora gambit accepted. Now here the main move is e6, but as happened in many opening, if black doesn't aware of the scenario, then he can likely to make this blunder that is knight to f6, which in fact, when I check this position in online database, I found out that this has been tried even in the recent years. So it is very important for you to know why this is considered as a big time mistake. Well here the obvious response is e5, so attacking two spots and the famous blunder here is knight captures e5 which leads to the instant disaster after knight captures e5, pawn captures e5 and now bishop to f7 and black loses the whole queen. So knight captures e5 is completely out of the equation so black has to accept with the d pawn but after that white is going to exchange the queen and now black has two responses and neither of them are good for the black. The obvious move king captures d8 has a bad reputation because of the move knight to g5 and now white is indeed threatening the f7 and there is no way black can stop it. If king to c7 then knight captures f7 is a very strong reply. So the most critical reply by the black over here is knight to a5 attacking the bishop and what black is hoping is maybe black can get two pieces for a rook and manage to get a playable position. Well of course here we are not going to play knight to f7 but instead of that my recommendation is you should play bishop captures f7 and after the following sequence that is e6, bishop captures e6, bishop captures e6, knight captures e6 jack, king to d7 and now the simplest move knight captures f8 rook captures f8 and castle on the king side after the whole sequence it turns out that white has at least one bishop and black has the open king and a clear cut target on e5 which is not easy to play so overall i think here it is only white who is playing for the win the second move i want to consider is knight captures d8 in order to retain one pawn and safeguarding the f7 square. But here white can create another sort of problem after this move that is knight to b5. So now white is threatening the move knight to c7 and forking king and a rook. So black needs to stop it. King to d7 can be easily met with the move knight captures e5. So the only good reply over here is rook to b8. Afterwards white should continue with the move knight captures e5. So this time around white is threatening nothing but a simple knight mate. <laughs> so in order to stop that the good reply over here is e6 and majority of the player has played the move knight to c7 which I personally think is inaccurate. Here my recommendation is you should castle first and now white is all set to get a winning position. For example, if black routinely continue here with bishop to e7, then after knight captures a7, castle on the king side and the move bishop to e3, not only white has a superior minor piece development, but white has a majority on the queen side, which is always a deciding factor in such a situations. 
So that's why what happened if your opponent try to save the pawn with the move a6. Well, now he's going to get a bigger problem because after knight check, king to e7, and now bishop to f4, creating an x-ray on the black rogue. So black has to act immediately with knight to h5, attacking the bishop. But after bishop to e3, I think this is a very pleasant scenario for the white. Kindly note, black cannot immediately kick the e5 knight with the move f6 because after bishop to c5, black king is going to be checkmated. So considering this fact, I get this position in one game against a 1900 rated player where my opponent continue with the move knight to c6 which in this situation is the best reply but after the following sequence of the moves that is f4, knight to f6, bishop to c5 check, king to d8, bishop to b6 trying to get a discover attack so my opponent has to forcefully play the move king to e7 but after rook a to d1 I think his pieces are completely boxed in. He tried bishop to d7 but then the tactics was waiting for him as after the move bishop captures e6 BAM black is completely busted. He tried f captures e6 but after bishop check king to d8 and knight captures e6 during the whole game was enjoy the attacking and at the end after all the fireworks white emerged with a pawn advantage and a winning position. So it is very clear that knight to f6 is a big time mistake at this position so black should continue with the move e6 which is in fact the main line of the Mora Gambit accepted. Here white should castle on the king side and now in the majority of the cases black has tried the knight moves but I think the a6 is a more accurate choice over here because knight moves allow white to execute his dirty chess tricks. The first move I want to consider is knight g to e7. Well here the obvious response is bishop to g5 which create one of the amazing trick in the Mora Gambit as black has to play accurate move a6 in this position but he play moves such as h6 which in fact happen at some high profile games but it is outright mistake as white get the winning position in the opening with the next move that is knight to b5 <laughs> and there is no way black can save the d6 pawn. If black greedily take this bishop then after knight captures d6 check, king to d7 and knight captures b7 black is going to lose a queen and if we try to save this with the move d5 which is the course of my blitz game against an 1800 rated opponent but I am afraid this is not going to solve any problems as after the following continuation that is e captures d5, pawn captures g5, d captures e6. Kindly note black is in the no position to exchange the queen because of the move knight to c7 check. So my opponent tried the move bishop captures e6 but after bishop captures e6, pawn captures e6 and the move knight to d6 we get the familiar pattern where black loses the queen and in fact the game. The second knight move I want to consider is knight to f6 which is the most popular choice at this position. Well after that white will continue with his normal piece development such as queen to e2, bishop to e7 and now rook to d1. Once again we reach to the very critical position where black has to play some accurate moves and here black has to play moves such as either e5 and bishop to d7 afterwards the game is completely balanced but the many times what happens is people play moves such as a6 and the most natural move in this position is castle which is an outright mistake but surprisingly enough I have seen this move tried recently and to illustrate my point I like to draw your attention here that 
castle has been tried even in the recent years and 31 games has been played from this so it's a great possibility that you might get in your game as well let's see what's wrong with the move castle well after that the initial move e5 gives black a huge difficult time i got this position against a candidate master where my opponent continued with the move knight to e8 i responded with the move e captures d6 he captured back with the bishop and now the obvious move knight to b5 so i'm trying to put as much as pressure on the d6 square and accurate enough my opponent tried to unpin his bishop with the move queen to e7 so so far every move looks very logical well here initiative started with the move bishop to g5 attacking the queen and after the move f6 bishop to e3 and white has created the first threat that is white wants to capture this bishop and after knight captures d6 he wants to play bishop to c5 and nabbing the whole piece so something black has to respond immediately and in the game he responded with the move bishop to b8 okay rook a to c1 and now the move which black wants to play here is a6 is not possible the simple reason is after bishop to c5 white get an exchange and in fact the winning edge so accordingly two moves has been tried from this position the first move b6 is not good at all the simple reason is after bishop to b3 attacking the knight bishop to b7 defending and now white has this lethal move boom so sacrificing the whole bishop and black should take it because after bishop to c5 black is going to lose an exchange so after a captures b6 here comes the whole point and this has happened in few games where white continue with the move bishop check rook to f7 and now rook to d7 and black has to surrender the queen otherwise his king is going to be checkmated one game in database continue here with queen to f8 but after rook f7 queen to b4 and now the star move rook to c4 queen to a5 which allow white to execute the finishing knot after rook f6 a discover check king to h8 and rook to f8 is actually a checkmate the highest played move in this position is king to h8 so avoiding any sort of problem but white still contains some nasty tricks to illustrate my point i like to show you a game where both the players are in excess of 2200 rating and here white continue with the move bishop to b3 so his idea is once again very simple bishop to c5 nabbing the exchange so black played the obvious move queen to f7 okay white continue with the move knight f to d4 so white is now pressurizing the e6 square and maybe a knight can come to the f5 with some devastation so black decided to challenge one of the centralized knight with the move a6 but i think this is just asking for it before i move on i like you to pause this video and find out what is wrong with this initial move a6 well i hope you do calculate it long and find out this accurate move that is knight capture c6 here black has to be careful as he cannot take the b knight because after a captures b5 and the move knight captures b8 white obtain a piece after rook to d8 and the funny enough is that e8 knight is not going anywhere So accordingly in the game black played the move b captures c6 but that allows knight to d4 attacking c6 which cannot be defended so black continue with the move knight to c7 but after following sequence that is rook captures c6 queen to e8 rook d to c1 attacking two times on the knight black get one counter with the move e5 but after knight to f3 queen to d7 and the move queen to c4 black lost the piece and in fact the game
Last but not least, what happens if your opponent continue with the move a6? Well, here white should continue with the move queen to e2. And now we are going to see one of the main and the most popular line from the black, where black time being avoid the development of his g9 with the move bishop to e7. And after rook to d1, continue with the move queen to c7. Here white should continue with the move bishop to f4 pressurizing the d6 square and accordingly black has to play some accurate moves. Knight to f6 is one of the main moves in this position and against it I have shown a sample line which is available in the PGN where by force white get an end game with a slight advantage and at least in those lines white has draw in his hand. But in the majority of the cases, black has tried the move e5 or knight to e5, which creates instant disaster for the black. For example, moves such as e5 create a hole on the d5 square and white can jump on it immediately with knight to d5, attacking the queen, queen to d8. And now the familiar trick happens so many times as white continue with bishop to e3 and naturally here black respond with the move knight to f6 which is an outright mistake as after bishop to b6 queen to d7 and knight to c7 black loses the exchange with a disgusting position the second move knight to e5 is one of the most popular choice by the black as if you check it out, you can see over here that knight to e5 has been tried 57 times. So what's wrong with this nature looking move knight to e5? Well, here comes one of the most stunning trick in the Mora Gambit, which is after knight to e5, black will continue with the move, bishop captures e5, pawn captures e5, and rook to c1. So once again, White has set a x-ray on the queen and all the time in this position black has moved the queen either to b8 or a5 which leads to some devastating tricks for the white. Now it doesn't matter whether your opponent plays queen to a5 or queen to b8. Let's say the most popular choice over here is queen to b8 and after this can you identify one move which instantly gives white a great advantage. Okay, I hope you find this wonderful blow. Bam! <laughs> so white is sacrificing the whole piece. And if black king goes to the f8, then knight to a4 is a very strong reply. So the critical line is, what happens if your opponent take this bishop? Well, after that, obviously white is going to continue with knight captures b5, looking at the c7 square. And kindly note, moves such as rook to a2 is not possible at all because after queen to c4, white is immediately winning. So the correct continuation over here is king to f8, avoiding the fork. Anyways, white will continue with knight to c7, attacking the rook. And rook has to move. If rook to a5, then b4 is a very strong reply and that rook has to move again as bishop cannot take the b4 pawn because he has to safeguard the d8 square. So accordingly, the most popular choice over here is rook captures a2. And it seems like black has escaped from the worst. But believe it or not, this is exactly white wants. And after white's next reply, queen to b5, no matter however black plays, the game will be finished very quickly. So white is threatening nothing but a checkmate and accordingly two moves has been tried. The first move g6 is not good at all because after the following sequence that is queen check, king to g7, knight captures e5 attacking on f7 so black response is force, black has to continue with knight to h6 but then comes a very simple reply, queen captures e7 and the next move, knight to e8, is going to happen, which cannot be prevented. And see the pitiable position for the black. His pieces can hardly move. 
Finally, the only reply left is, what happens if your opponent plays a knight to f6? Well, after that, the task is again very easy. White will continue with the move, queen captures e5. So white has a threat now of knight captures e6 and nabbing the queen. So accordingly, black has to move the queen. If king to g8, then knight to d5 is a very strong reply. So white has some multiple threats which cannot be prevented. So let's consider what happens if the most accurate reply queen to a7 has been played. Well against this my recommendation is white should continue with the move knight to d5. So there's a threat of rook capture c8. So bishop to d7 is forced. But now comes the winning blow. Knight captures e7 and not only white get his piece back but a tremendous attack to boot. The problem here is black cannot take this knight because of the following reason. If king takes e7 then after the following continuation that is queen check, king to e8, rook to c7 so three pieces are eyeing at the d7 square. So the only way to defend is to play queen to e4 but then white has this lethal blow rook to c1 and in fact there is no stopping on the c8 except black has to give up the queen and get tortured by white for a long time. Well I hope you enjoy and learn this wonderful tricks in the Smith Mura Gambit accepted mainline. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on my video and I'll meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.